Hello, you're watching the Hub Online Network. My name is Gareth, and we're going to go on with our uh, COVID-19 update for March 23rd, 2020. Uh, it has been another busy weekend, as you probably have been glued to your uh, news screens over the last couple of days. We took the weekend off, um, and... Anyway, now we're here. So we are going to be doing these updates a little bit later in the day so we can also update you on what uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and Adrian Dix have been saying. So we're not starting ahead of them. We're now starting after them. And so let's just start at the top of my package here and work my way down. So uh, the Cash Creek Park Playground is closed until further notice. Unfortunately, it is not possible to ensure that it is clean and sanitized at all times. Thank you for your understanding. So, and this is going around uh, BC and Canada as a whole. They're closing down all of the parks. Uh, so please don't go there. If you want to go to a park, stay well away from other people. There has been uh, lots, especially in Vancouver, uh, lots of people have been going to like the beach and stuff and they're not getting, and they're not staying very far away from each other. And there has been cases of now teenagers getting COVID-19 because they were at the beach, not social distancing, and now they're sick. So it's one thing to go for a drive, hang out in your own yard. If you're gonna go to a park, don't play on the playground, just go into the open spaces, uh, but don't go near anybody outside of your own family. And yeah. Oh, the other thing that we're going to do today, and I'll actually play the first clip for you now, is Jessica is, we're going to play a little game with you guys. Uh, so Jessica has some trivia questions for you. And we're going to do a thing where uh, throughout the week, Jessica's going to have three questions and I'll play them spor sporadically through the uh, show here. Uh, at the end of the week, whoever has the most points wins a uh, package, a uh, prize package of some kind from us. I'm not sure what's in the package. It's it, again, this is something that Jessica's doing. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to play part one now, and we'll get an idea as to what's going on. Hey everybody, it's Jessica with the Hub Online Network. We want to play a week-long trivia game with you this week to keep everybody entertained while we're at home and social distancing. Every day I'm going to have three different questions for you. A pop trivia question, a riddle, and a local history question. So let's play along. Just a few rules about our game this week. Rule number one, be sure to send us your answer every single day after you've watched our live video to han at ashcrofthub.com or send us a PM on Facebook. We will tally up all of the right answers at the end of the week and award our prize on Monday's video next week. Happy playing! Trivia question number <laughs> one. This is about the history of Ashcroft and Cache Creek. Can you name the oldest still standing building in both Ashcroft and Cache Creek? So yeah, thank you Jessica, very cool. Uh, what is the oldest longest standing building in Ashcroft and Cache Creek, um, you can email your answers to hon at ashcrofthub.com. Okay, uh, update on, so AA meetings have been canceled across the globe until further notice, but if you were in need of a 12-step meeting, there is in the rooms.com video meetings, just like the real thing. Any questions, just uh, yeah, so AA meetings are canceled, but there is a rooms.com where you can do video meetings and check in there, just so you are all aware. Okay. Um, I am, so Jessica is at home also, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can uh, chat with us with Jessica, or you can also phone me at the phone number posted on my name here at 250-457-0538, and I will take your call live here uh, if you have any comments that you want to say just about the situation that's happening in general, or uh, you want to say something positive that you've been doing while you've been in self-isolation, phone in, let us know. Again, 250-457-0538 and get online now. Um, so this is, I think I read this on Friday, but I'm going to read it again. This is an update from the IDA Pharmacy in Ashcroft. 
So, I appreciate that there is a large amount of uncertainty about what is to come in the following months. I'd like to provide an update on behalf of Ashcroft IDA Pharmacy for how we are going to maintain operations going forward and some requests for our patients and customers to help relieve the recently increased demand. So one, this is coming from John, the pharmacy manager. Uh, one, as I'm sure all local businesses are doing, we've increased our sanitation and cleaning procedures significantly, especially focusing on high touch surfaces to help minimize viral transmission. We ask that anybody who is currently ill to do their best to arrange for somebody else to drop off or pick up prescriptions and any other supplies you need. Two, effective March 28th, this coming Saturday, we will have to close the store on Saturdays. Rest assured we will stay open Monday to Friday, 9 to 5.30, and have no plans for any additional changes for the foreseeable future. Three, some drug shortages will be inevitable, will inevitably occur, but are expected to be limited to certain medications rather than a widespread loss of all supply. Our wholesaler has started rationing medication shipments in order to maintain a steady supply and prevent excess ordering. Note that this is a favor favorable measure for all rural independent pharmacies as well as get an equitable share of available medications without worry of larger pharmacies stockpiling excess amounts. Going forward, we'll be doing our part to ensure responsible use of our available stock. Please only renew your prescriptions as they come due. We will generally follow Pharmacare guidelines of renewing within two weeks of prescriptions running out. We will also be limiting all fills to a three-month supply. Some certain medications or devices may be further limited to a one-month one supply. Rest assured that in the event one of your medications is unavailable, we will be working closely with local physicians to make sure that you can switch to an alternate if needed. Four, finally, we have been very busy so far this week and would greatly appreciate if you could allow us plenty of time to fill prescriptions. If possible, please phone or drop off your prescription a day or two in advance. If you have any questions, let us know. John, Pharmacy Manager. So, the thing, big thing to take away from that is they are going to be closed starting Saturdays, this, this Saturday coming up. So if you need anything, make sure that you get it in by Friday, so you pick it up by Friday if you need it for Saturday. Um, last week, I meant to read this, but I didn't. So here is a uh, update from the Packing House in Spence's Bridge. So the Packing House team would like to extend our blessings to all those who are facing unimaginable decisions as a negative, uh, as they navigate a new world of rapidly spreading pandemic virus that dictates a significant social business shutdown. It is up to each of each one of us as individuals to practice social distancing in order to stop the rising tide of this invisible intruder, COVID-19. As we daily evaluate the unfolding situation, we must strive to do our part to ease the discomfort of an unwanted invisible intruder. The Packing House hopes to add a little comfort and a lot of scrumptiousness to an unknown challenging tomorrow. As of Saturday, March 21st, home delivery orders only. Orders taken until 5 p.m. every day. Lunch and dinner only. Call the Packing House at 250-458-2256 and you may prepay at the pantry convenience store or e-transfer if you wish. We will also consider payment options based on circumstance. We will knock, leave the, leave the delivery at the door unless otherwise directed. We will need to embrace a new reality if we wish this perilous pandemic to be as short as short-lived as possible. We are all in this together in social distancing solidarity, the Packing House team. So, Packing House and Spence's Bridge is still open, but they're only doing drop-off stuff. So, call them, which is again, 250-458-2256 to get your orders in and they will drop it off at your door and they'll work out a payment schedule with you. So now we have the health update from Dr. Bonnie Henry and Adrian Dix. So three more people have died in complications related to COVID-19 in BC. In the past two days, health officials confirmed Monday, bringing the total number of deaths in the province to 13. Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry said 472 people have now tested positive for the coronavirus, with 48 new cases province-wide since Saturday. Two of the three new deaths are linked to care homes in Metro Vancouver, 
one at the Lynn Valley Care Home in North Vancouver and the other at Harrow Park Centre in Vancouver. The third person who died is an elderly person who lived in Fraser Health Region. Henry said that there were 33 people in hospital as of Monday, 14 of whom are in intensive care. 11 of the 13 COVID-related deaths in BC have been recorded at long-term care homes. Uh, she goes on to say that large gatherings need to stop. BC remains under a state of emergency and residents have been ordered to stay home as much as possible and avoid groups to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Dix has said the directive for social or physical distancing is not a request. The city, okay. So that's all from Dr. Bonnie Henry. Um, my understanding is there were several new cases that came up in Kamloops over the weekend. Uh, so if you know anybody that is affected by that, um, you got to take care of yourself. My grandfather always says, take care of number one first. Um, so the city of Kamloops has now also declared a state of emergency. This happened on Friday after our report on Friday morning. So Mayor Ken Christian made the announcement Friday afternoon on the steps of City Hall. The declaration provides the city the ability to respond to more to respond more nimbly and more quickly to the COVID-19 on behalf of the citizens of Kamloops. Um, he continues to say that just a couple of new announcements and a reminder of previous announcements. Due to unprecedented demands, quarantines may be limited. Sorry, quantities may be limited. Oh, where are we here? Nope, sorry, this is from Safety Mart Foods. This next one's from Safety Mart. Uh, just a couple of new announcements and a reminder of previous announcement, announcements. Due to unprecedented demands, quantities may be limited and we are unable to issue rain checks at this time. We are working hard to return to normal stock levels and ensure appropriate quantities to our customers. If you see a closed sign on one of our tills, please be respectful of it. Our staff are working hard. Please follow all social distancing rules when in the store to protect our staff and other shoppers. Please keep six feet away. If possible, come into the store as one, leave the family and home and leave the family at home or in the car. Leave all reusable shopping bags at home. All fees on plastic bags are being waived at this time. Absolutely no bottle returns until further notice. Thank you all for your cooperation and continued patience, the management and staff at Safety Mart Foods. So uh, Safety Mart, the doctors, uh, the hospitals, all of those people are working their hardest to keep everything going. And we thank them uh, all very much. So yes, please, only one person from a family go to Safety Mart at a time. Uh, and as they're saying here, uh, quantities may be limited. So this is becoming the, the new reality, folks. If, if the rest of the world is anything to uh, judge what's happening. It's only going to get a little bit worse from here. So, uh, but let's watch number two of Jessica's questions and I'll be right back. Okay. All right. I've got your pop trivia for today. Can you name Gareth and Dana's top pick for their favorite action adventure movie from the 1980s? I'll give you a hint. You might have to check out our YouTube page and watch a few videos. Short and sweet. So here's an update from Interior Health. Interior Health is making changes to long-term care and community programs and services to protect those most vulnerable to COVID-19 and address potential pressures on the acute care system. The changes include temporary suspending of interfacility transfers or moving individuals from one care home to another, except in circumstances of intolerable risk. Uh, clients place on the wait list for transfer will not be impacted by this change. Prioritizing administrations to long-term care from acute care over those from the community where possible. Temporary suspending all adult day programs. Temporarily suspending in-facility respite care, except in circumstances of intolerable risk for those who require palliative end-of-life care. These changes will enable healthcare staff to focus on increased surveillance and infection prevention protocols and prevent the spread of COVID-19 to our vulnerable seniors. Interior Health, along with all other BC Regions health authorities, 
is restricting visitors in long-term care to essential visits only. Essential visits include uh, compassionate visits for end-of-life care and visits that support care plans for residents based on resident and family needs. So that's the update from Interior Health for what they are doing to help out. Uh, what am I? Okay, so here is an update from our MP or Member of Parliament, Brad Viss, uh, for immediate release as of today. So the Honorable Anthony Rhoda, Speaker of the House of Commons, has given notice for the House to meet on Tuesday, March 24th at 12 p.m. Uh, for the consideration of measures related to COVID-19 pandemic. Following the direction of our Conservative leadership team and based on the advice of the Chief Public Health Officer of Canada, I and the majority of MPs have been asked to remain in our constituencies. While I desire to be in Parliament at this time, we must all do our part to prevent the spread of COVID-19, and right now that means staying at home and self-isolating. My colleague MP Dan Albus, Shadow Minister of for Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion, will represent BC for the Conservative Party of Canada. Given the current challenges facing, facing businesses and workers and the record level of EI claims, I cannot think of a better representative as Deputy Shadow Minister for Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion. I am in close contact with Mr. Albus and we will advocate on, av advocate on behalf of those financially impacted by COVID-19. All Canadians, including parliamentarians, must work together at this time and the, and the Conservative Party will support the Liberal government's emergency legislation. As the official opposition, however, it remains the Conservative Party duty to put forward improvements to the government's plan, which is why we are calling for increased support for small businesses and workers by 1. Significantly increasing the wage subsidy to protect workers. 2. Refunding all GST remittances to small businesses that collected them in at least the last six months. And three, backstopping banks that extend low interest loans to small businesses. My staff and I continue to serve constituents. You can reach our office at 604-814-5710 or brad.vis at parl.gc.ca. To my constituents, please follow all Public Health Agency of Canada precautions. Wash your hands regular, regularly for at least 20 minutes. Avoid touching your face. Stay away from sick individuals. Cough into your sleeve. And most importantly, stay home. Information on COVID-19 can be found at www.canada.ca or via con coronavirus hotline, um, but mainly just call 811. Thank you, Brad. This. Okay, <clears throat> COVID-19, BC parks to suspend camping access to some facilities. Uh, this is as of March 20th. So latest movement attempts to curb spread of the novel coronavirus. BC parks has suspended camping until the end of April, which also curtailing access to trails and other facilities in the latest move by provincial officials to curb the spread of COVID-19. While people will be able to day hike, washrooms and day use facilities will be suspended until further notice. Some parking lots will be closed and gated where necessary. We are following the advice of the provincial health officer to help people get outside while ensuring they are following the PHO's direction uh, and guidance to stay healthy. Environment Minister George Heyman said in a statement, some day use services and facilities are currently available at the following provincial parks. Mount Seymour Provincial Park, Cypress Provincial Park, Goldstream Provincial Park, Rath, Trevor Beach Provincial Park, Miracle Beach Provincial Park, Wells Gray Provincial Park. In alignment with Parks Canada, all campgrounds, camping opportunities, and accommodations will be closed until at least April 30th. Refunds will be automatically provided to those with existing reservations during this time. Um, this was a also this was an article from Black Press, and I believe Ashley Wadahani Wadahani is the person that wrote it. So thank you to Black Press for this uh, update on what's going on with the provincial parks. Okay, so 
We also have a brief update from the doctors in Cash, uh, not Cash Creek, in Ashcroft. Um, so this is uh, from David Dirksen. Um, so it says, so David Dirksen and I are in contact. So he says, Dear Gareth, uh, I have reached out to the doctors with your questions and received the following response. Thank you very much, David, for checking in. It is indeed a challenging moment. As for the clinic, we have put measures in place to ensure that we limit contacts with our outpatients as well as our long-term care patients. The staff have been well-trained to take focused history over the phone and triage accordingly using MOH, IH protocols and tools. Uh, we are beginning to utilize our telehealth services using the funding provided through the division. And for those that cannot access the telehealth, we will continue to do phone consults for now. Regarding how community can support us, we would like to encourage the community to ensure they abide by the social distancing recommendation to only use the health facilities, including our weekend ER, only if absolutely required. We thank you for we thank you kindly for your considerate supports, uh, Dr. Editola. Um, so that's what's coming from them. So they're just asking to, if you want to support what they are doing, uh, stay away unless you absolutely have to go in. Um, so thank you for the update, uh, David and Dr. Editola. <clears throat> um, you know what, I'm just going to throw in just to, to change it up a little bit because this is a little bit of doom and gloomy. Uh, let's talk about some, last week I mentioned movies. Well, I don't we talk about some TV shows this time. Again, if you want to uh, talk about anything, including TV shows or movies, give me a call at 250-457-0538. Um, I'll answer your phone right now if you wanted to give me a call. So, uh, some things that I was thinking about, I have a little list here. Uh, where am I? So, some of the standard ones. Um, so, these are shows that I would typically watch if I was stuck at home. So, X-Files is a great show. Mulder, Scully, Aliens, uh, Lost Time, and... They start way back in 1992, so you can check out what the clothes looked like back in 1992. They're absolutely awful, especially Scully's outfits, but they really grow into uh, in, into themselves as actors and stuff moving forward. So by like season five, they're wearing more contemporary clothes. They look a little bit more stylish. Uh, some of the episodes have a bigger budget, um, but the first two or three seasons is really where like the uh, uh, conspiracy stuff really sets in and it's it's not it's not so polished it, so I enjoy the first three seasons but the show really kind of gets bad about season six season seven um, so really you only watch it up to there Supernatural is another good one that's both and both of these shows have been filmed in BC uh, Supernatural uh, is as his last season happening now although it's been suspended due to the COVID-19 outbreak, um, but there's 14 seasons that you can watch now with the 15 seasons being worked on, so there's lots of episodes to watch. I've only personally watched it up to the end of season six. Um, I felt like that was a good spot to end it, but tell me that I'm wrong. Let me know if you've seen past season six of Supernatural, and tell me how good that is. Uh, of course, there's friends that you can watch on I believe it's still on Netflix until the end of April. Um, same thing with The Office. So those are, those are two good shows. If you are um, if you are wanting to watch something with kids, uh, check out the original Transformers show. Uh, or on Disney Plus, they have Chippendales, Rescue Rangers. They have Darkwing Duck, the old school Ducktales. Um, the, I, I mentioned this last week, but talking about Star Wars, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels, two good shows for kids. Uh, what else do we got? And I'll come, I'll, as I'm thinking about it, I'll come back. Honorable mention, talking about TV shows, we'll say thank you to Barbara Roden for last week. Uh, Shit's Creek is another very good show. They're ending the season or series as of this season coming up. 
Um, so check that out and I'll come back with a few more off the top of my head in a few moments. So let's talk about, no, I've already read this. Uh, I've already read that, where am I here? Okay, so this is a letter that came out yesterday from the teachers uh, union and school district. So not school district 74, but like the school ministry in general across BC. And it's a little bit blurry. So let me, uh, so just give me a, bear with me as I try to read this. So dear BC teachers, and this is reading to the teachers specifically, we want to thank you for your patience and understanding as the government, school districts, and the BC Teachers Federation work together to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and the suspension of in-school classes. We know it has been a difficult time for everyone involved. The decision to suspend in-classroom learning has made was made on Tuesday, March 17th, under the direction of the Provincial Health Officer. This action was necessary to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 and protect the health of all British Columbians. Immediately following the announcement to suspend in-classroom learning, the Ministry of Education, School District, the BCTF, QP, BCSTA, and all education partners began working together to determine how we can maintain the important services and supports for students, staff, families, and the school community that teachers provide. We know many of you are worried about your own safety, the health of loved ones, and the well-being of your students. We take those concerns very seriously and are working hard to address them. Please be assured that the health and safety of our teachers, students, and our communities is paramount in all of government decisions ma decision making. The government and school districts are working closely with public health officials to ensure that BC schools are safe. This includes uh, preventative measures, including uh, thorough cleaning protocols, good hygiene practices, and physical distance strategies. Teachers are going to play a critical role to support students during this extraordinary time. As a society, we need to find ways to create a sense of normality, uh, routine, and learning for children and youth. We don't fully know what that's going to look like, but the goal is to keep teachers working and keep students engaged. We know many of you are concerned about what comes next as in, at the conclusion of spring break. That is why we both, want, we both wanted to update you on the plans that are currently underway across the province and provide you with information on what to expect over the weeks ahead. First, the ministry and K-12 education partners have convened a number of technical com committees to help advise government on the path forward. This will include supporting the development and new resources and identifying and responding to emergency issues, uh, sorry, emerging issues. These committees will help establish the right provincial level of guidance for districts to use their local planning efforts. This is a long uh, statement. So I apologize for that, but continued. Uh, second, integrated guidelines for districts and schools to use in their planning and already under development. Our integrated guidelines will include information on health and safety measures uh, consistent with the Public Health Agency of Canada, as well as uh, as well in response to the many questions that have come forward since March 17th, a list of frequently asked questions or FAQs have been developed and will con constantly update as the situation changes. The FAQs will be circulated in all boards of education and school district staff to help inform decisions at the local level. A uh, similar set of F FAQs designed for students and their families will also be released public, uh, publicly next week. Answers in the FAQs will be consistent with information provided by the public health officer. Third, the BCTF local teachers associations, school districts, and Ministry of Education are working together to strategize how we can provide the services necessary to support our students and communities in this incredible time of need. 
to guide those conversations, the government has put forward uh, these four guiding principles that we are collectively use in, to inform our decisions through this time. One, maintain a healthy and safe environment for all students and families and all employees. Two, provide services to support children of essential workers. Three, support vulnerable students who may need special assistance. Four, provide continuity of educational opportunities for all students. We know teachers are dedicated to the students and families you serve, but there is no need for you to begin working on specific plans for returning to work right now. Your school district will allow you time to collect collaborative for collaborative uh, planning when you return to work. That will include time to develop local plans to support your students that aligned with these principles and to provide guidelines. BCTF members all have free access to Sterling Minds, a tool that helps you access, monitor, and improve your mental fitness. Um, anyway, it's okay. And as we move forward together, we are committed to making sure you have timely information uh, communicated to you on a regular basis. We request your patience and want to remind you that uh, speculation can cause unnecessary stress during, during what is already an incredible anxious time. Uh, by continuing to work together in partnership, we are confident we will find the way forward. This is a very challenging time in our province and around the world. Please take necessary preventative measures to keep you and your families healthy. So thank you to the school district, the school ministry, and to the teachers. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about the Equality Project. Uh, due to COVID-19 virus, the Equality Project will be open Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 11 to 1 p.m. for takeout only. We want to make sure that those needs, that those in need get food, and we want everyone to stay safe. We continue to pray for supplies and volunteers, and we'll update you as things progress. So as far as my understanding is, we did have a question about the Equality Project financially. They seem to be doing okay. Um, but they're limiting their hours to help the people that need it. So thank you to the Equality Project. You guys are doing a great job. Um, Ashcroft Home Hardware, as of today. Uh, so, two, team members, customers, and the community. The health and well-being of the community is our, first is our first concern. We would like to announce new options in order to continue service excellence despite the current situation. To assist the community in this time of social distancing, isolation, or quarantine, we offer these new services free of charge. One, free delivery in the towns of Ashcroft and Cash Creek. Everything you need to keep your home tip-top shape and or start a new project delivered right to your door. Just phone the store at 250-453-2281. Pay for your order over the phone with your account or credit card. We also offer EFT transfers by email. Uh, we will deliver right to your door, place or place of business. This includes lumber, paint, garden supplies, hardware, cleaners, or anything else we may have in the store. $20 minimum purchase. Please call the store if you have delivery needs out of town. We are offering these services at minimal cost. Two, pick up at door. You can phone your order into the store and we will bring you know, curbside for you. Three, streamlined home hardware online shopping. Visit www.homehardware.ca slash en uh, from the comfort of your home under my store. Select Ashcroft Home Building Center. Purchase your items. Uh, many people are asking the same questions. Is it safe to receive and handle a shipment? The WHO and PHAC have stated that the likelihood of catching the coronavirus by touching cardboard or other shipping containers is low. Ashcroft Home Building Center is following the guidance of global health experts of the WHO and the PFAC, PHAC. What a weird acronym. Um, FAC. <laughs> on preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. 
We remind our employees about the frequent hand washing and we are regularly cleaning and disinfecting our facilities and equipment, especially counters, phones, and keypads. Our team will continue to work and serve the needs of the community while keeping our employees and customers safe. Thank you for trusting us with your business. Okay, so there's that from Home Hardware. Let's play Jessica's last question at this time. All right, we've got a riddle coming up next. Which one of the three would see most clearly in total darkness? A leopard, a bat, or an owl? All right, that's it for today's questions. Be sure to get your answers into us via email, hon at ashcrofthub.com, or Facebook Messenger on our uh, Hub Online Network Facebook page. Don't be putting those answers in the comments because we want everybody to have a chance to win. Join us again tomorrow for three more questions. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Jessica and Alice, for doing that. So again, you can get in your answers here. We'll have more for the rest of the week. Um, I'm not done yet. I'm just saying that you can do that. And we will tally up all the points. And whoever wins will get a prize pack from us. Uh, moving on to a statement that came out last, I believe, last Friday from the village of Cache Creek. Uh, so this is the Regional First Nation and Local Governance Public Statement. Area leaders from First Nations and local governments uh, recently met with area health providers and first responders and will continue to meet to discuss local issues and concerns regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. We are closely following direction and advice from the federal and provincial agencies overseeing the response to this health emergency. When you see our facilities being closed or restricted, we are doing so for your safety as well as the safety of our workers. Essential services such as water, sewer, and garbage collection will continue. Our fire department, the RCMP, ambulance services, the pharmacy, and health facilities will remain in operation. Please, for everyone's safety, maintain the social distancing rule of being no closer than six feet from others when outside your own home. Wash your hands with soap at least for at least 20 seconds. Uh, so that's two happy birthdays. Uh, before touching your face or food. We ask that everyone follows direction from health experts. Be aware that there are scammers out there trying to raise fears of to convince you to give them your money. And please don't follow advice you see on social media unless one of these websites has confirmed it. Public Health Canada, BC Centre for Disease Control, Interior Health Authority. Uh, for non-clinical emergencies, you can call 1-888-COVID-19. This number is available seven days a week from 7.30 to 8, 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. in over 110 languages. People can also text 604-630-0300 for non-clinical support. People with medical concerns should call 811. And lastly, please treat each other with kindness and respect during this stressful time. So that is the message from the Cash Creek uh, and local governments. Um, that being said, again, there are council meetings tonight that I will be at, um, but we are encouraging people not to go. We're not saying that you can't go, but we're encouraging you not to go. So if you have questions that you would like asked to our um, local government, uh, please, you can email me at hon at ashcrofthub.com, at which point I can then ask the questions on your behalf to the uh, councils. Um, this will also, I will also have these posted to first thing tomorrow morning. So again, please, if you can avoid it, do not go to the council meetings tonight at either Cash Creek or Ashcroft, and we will have these up tomorrow. I'm sure that they'll both be making statements on what is going on with the local municipalities. Um, but, and again, I'm, I'm still going here, people. Uh, so if you want to call in, 250-457-0538, give me a call and I'll answer, talk to you right now as I'm on the air. So a few more things just to get through before, <clears throat> before we are done. 
So just a statement on some local businesses. So Safety Mart, regular hours, no reusable shopping bags, maintain social distance guidelines and lineups, no bottle returns at this time. Uh, Caribou clear exchanges still as usual. Cheryl's Place, I'm assuming that this is, I don't know where Cheryl's Place is. I'm assuming it's in Clinton, I wanna say. Um, but they're open 6.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the weekends, delivery and takeout only. Tim Hortons, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. as of Sunday, March 22nd, drive through and mobile app takeout available. They're not letting people come in to the counter. BC Liquor Stores, no bottle returns accepted, but they are still open. Uh, Gemini Wellness Services, Protein in Ashcroft, they have once a week orders available, payment through e-transfer or online payments. Uh, Husky Services, the restaurant, is open from 8 to 6, takeout only, gas station normal operations. 70 Mile General Store, offering virtual grocery shopping. Uh, check their Facebook page, order between 9 and 11 a.m. daily, and you can have your order ready for pickup between 1 and 3 p.m. Ashcroft IDA Pharmacy, as we talked about before, they're open from 9 to 5.30 p.m. Monday to Friday, but they will be closed on Saturdays. Horstein's Farm Market, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. daily. The restaurant is closed, but pre-made sandwiches are available in the cooler section of the store. Uh, produce, farm, fresh eggs, breads, pies, seeds, etc. are available. Curbside, curbside store pickup is also available. Sam's Diner. Delivery, over $30 available within Ashcroft or takeout. Annie's Pizza, takeout only. Manny's Grill and Pizza, um, takeout or delivery in Cash Creek only. Heartland, takeout only, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Ashcroft, Chevron and KFC. Uh, the KFC is open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Takeout and delivery free on $20 or more. Uh, if you, so you have to buy $20 or more in Ashcroft or you gotta have $40 or more in Cash Creek to have delivery. Um, Ashcroft, home building, we already talked about that. Star House Restaurant is closed. Unity is closed and Gold Mountain Restaurant is closed. I have not heard about, oh, Cheryl's Place. Never mind. I now know what Cheryl's Place is. That is the restaurant that is attached to the Petro Can in Cash Creek. Um, so that is where that restaurant is. Anyway, um, I'm just going to see if there's any updates here. No. Uh, so that's that one. What else do we got? Do not forget about the self-assessment tool provided by the government, which is covid19.thrive.health. Um, it's a great, out, great way to determine whether you feel that if you have these symptoms, call 811 um, and they'll direct you what to do from there. Do not just go to the hospital. Please do not just go to the hospital. Call 811 first. They'll direct you what to do. They might even, you should be able to get a test kit for at home to determine what's going on. Um, everything I've heard has said that the government is ramping up testing. So again, that is covid19.thrive.health. That is all that I really have for now, I believe. I can think of a couple more shows to watch. Star Trek has a lot of shows. Um, it's not all the same, so it's nice because it's the Kirk era, the Picard era. Janeway, Deep Space Nine. There's lots of different versions of Star Trek that you can watch. They're all different. They're all fun. Uh, what else? Yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. I think that that's uh, all that I have for today. Um, so if you have anything that you would like to let us know about, please email us at hon at ashcrofthub.com. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. to go live again. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, last week, we had 20, over 2,700 views on our four videos. Um, let's see if we can't pump those numbers up. So please uh, share this. Uh, share this video. Let's, oh, sorry. Last thing popped into my head. There's a new Facebook group called Ashcroft Cash Creek Clinton COVID-19 Update. 
Uh, so if you're not part of that group already, uh, that group is just posting uh, news material and suggestions. It's not a place for memes, although I will say that of all of this COVID-19 stuff, the memes are pretty funny. Um, bad taste, of course, but, but funny. Um, anyway, if you're not part of that group, look it out, search it out. Um, it's a good group to be a part of right now. And again, email us at, at han at ashcrafthub.com. Please do not go to the council meetings. We will be there. You can watch them tomorrow, but you can send us your questions. And thanks for watching. Share this video. Stay safe. Be clean. Social distance. And have a good day.